Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this lecture on transition metal organometallic chemistry from principles to applications. In the course of last few lectures, we have been discussing a very important class of transition metal compounds. These are called the sigma alkyl complexes. We were looking into the reactivity of these complexes, particularly their property of being extremely sensitive to air and moisture. And one of the reason for them being so reactive is a particular class of reaction that they exhibit which is better known as beta elimination. So, we are looking into a very important reaction that accounts for high reactivity of transition metal sigma alkyl complexes and these are called beta elimination reaction. These reactions particularly observed in sigma alkyl complexes so one needs to understand uh, the reason for or the mechanism of how this reaction works for example transition metal complexes having beta hydrogen for let's say if i have a transition metal bound to a ligand containing a uh, alkyl moiety which has a uh, beta hydrogen. Beta hydrogen meaning the location of the hydrogen is on the beta carbon. This is alpha carbon, beta carbon. It undergoes an interaction of this carbon hydrogen sigma bond with a vacant metal d orbital that goes via a four member transition state of the one shown here leading to the formation of an alkene bound complex. So, this beta elimination results in migration of this beta hydrogen from the beta carbon onto the metal and the cleavage of this metal carbon bond huh, leading to an olefint uh, which sort of happens in a concerted pathway resulting in a metal hydride and a coordinated olefin. These can finally eliminate the olefin plus a metal hydrate. So, this results in decomposition of metal alkyl compounds having beta hydrogen. This is a very spontaneous reaction leading to decomposition of many metal alkyl complexes. This beta hydride elimination is also part of catalyst decomposition in many important transition metal catalyzed reactions. For example, it is a major decomposition pathway for olefin polymerization reaction catalyzed by transition metal that proceeds 
via coordination insertion pathway. Catalyst decomposition. in olefin polymerization reaction. Now, one may on wonder whether this reaction is reversible or irreversible. Well, beta elimination can be reversible. For example, in this CP2NB C2H4 ethyl complex, it loses this olefin to give the corresponding hydride complex in which the olefin is lost from the ethyl moiety and this beta hydrogen gets incorporated into the niobium. Now, this complex when treated back with olefin, gives back the ethyl complex. For beta elimination can be reversible. An important experimental, coup, uh, experimental proof for beta elimination came from a seminal experiment using deuterium studies. For example, this was proven using isotope leveling experiment. For example, for this tributyl phosphorus copper CH2 CD2 C2 H5 complex which had cleverly incorporated deuterium in its beta position as expected gave the copper deuteride complex plus the corresponding alkene. So, this formation of copper deuteride convincingly proves that elimination occurred from the beta position. So, this was a convincing proof 
which sort of establish the fact that in beta elimination reaction the hydrogen is evolved from the beta position. There were no formation of copper hydride which would have resulted from alpha elimination and hence the name beta elimination derived from for this reason. Now, as beta elimination is a major pathway leading to the decomposition of transition metal sigma alkyl complexes. Now, one of the important challenge in this area is to suppress beta elimination. So, that longevity and stability of transition metal organometallic compounds can be improved. So, this became an important topic of research and several strategies were evolved towards this challenge. And one of the major one was for example, if the formation of olefin is blocked or suppressed for some reason or other, then in principle we should be able to suppress beta elimination. So, the first strategy was in if the olefin formed be energetically unfavorable. So, that was a nice strategy because beta elimination will always lead to the formation of olefin and if one designs the alkyl moiety as such that the olefin that forms from it becomes energetically unfavorable then probably the beta elimination will not proceed. This was a very clever and ingenious way of stopping beta elimination. The other, the other studies obviously include designing ligands. For example, if the ligand does not have any hydrogen in a beta position, probably beta elimination would never proceed. So, the second strategy is about the absence of beta hydrogen. And Third one also involved a clever technique where the beta hydrogen was suppressed because of coordinative saturation. Now, if one were to look back at the four member transition state that we had drawn earlier for beta hydrogen elimination reaction, then it may be noticed that beta hydrogen was interacting with the metal as a result of metal undergoing a increase in coordination number. So, the logic in this particular strategy is that if the central metal atom is coordinatively saturated, then the metal atom cannot interact with the beta hydrogen and hence would not participate in beta elimination reaction. The, this strategy is about the central metal atom. being coordinatively saturated. So, what we are seeing that after understanding how the beta elimination occurs, one can come up with several strategies which will suppress this beta elimination process. The first one being that if somehow the formation of olefin is made unfavorable, we 
that be because of whatever reasons we will discuss in more details, uh, then probably beta elimination will be suppressed even though the metal sigma alkyl moiety may have a beta hydrogen. The second approach was if the beta hydrogen is absent in a particular metal sigma alkyl complex, obviously it cannot undergo beta hydrogen elimination. And lastly, since the beta hydrogen elimination requires participation of the metal and an increase in coordination uh, number at the metal. So, if the metal is coordinatively saturated, then obviously it will not be able to attack the beta hydrogen of the ligand and hence the beta elimination will be suppressed. We are going to discuss each of these strategies in much more uh, details and see how they really affect this uh, process of beta elimination favorably in terms of suppressing the elimination process. Let us look at this first strategy of formation of living olefin becomes sterically or energetically unfavorable. Uh, this brings us back to a famous rule called Brett's rule. Which states that olefinic bond formed at the bridge state carbon or double bond formed with higher elements in the period are unfavorable. or with elements with higher in period are unfavorable. For example, the norbornyl group so the norbornyl group does not undergo beta elimination because of the reason that the olefinic bond will be a uh, formed at the bridge state carbon. Let us sort of take a look. So, if a olefin were to form, then the olefinic bond would be, so this has a beta hydrogen. So, this is alpha, this is beta and this hydrogen if it were to get attacked, the resultant olefin would be unfavorable and would have a structure something like this. which is unfavorable according to Brett's rule. And hence this type of compounds does not undergo beta elimination. And as a result this norbornyl group is very good in stabilizing unusual stabilizes unusual oxidation states states of metal like chromium 4 manganese 4 
iron 4 cobalt 4 in binary alkyl complexes where there is only metal and the ligand and nor burning being very big in size it is it also makes the metal center sterically saturated and hence we see that successful utilization of the first strategy of making the formation of olefinic bond uns unstable leads to transition metal sigma alkyl complexes having very high oxidation states, unusual oxidation states which otherwise become extremely difficult to stabilize. Also what is interesting in this particular example is that even though the norbornane does have a beta hydrogen, but because of the steric bulk of the ligand as well as because of the formation of the olefin being unstable, this norbornane despite having that beta hydrogen does not undergo this so facile beta elimination process. So, this is a very successful implementation of the strategy that we have been talking about. Now, let us look at the next strategy which was absent absence of beta elimination uh, beta hydrogens. Now, this strategy revolves around the fact that if there is no beta hydrogen in the sigma alkyl complex then obviously beta elimination may not happen. The second strategy is about Now, this also is an effective uh, approach towards suppressing beta elimination and as a result several new types of ligands have been developed using this strategy. We are going to take a look at some of these ligands and when these ligands are attached to the metal in transition metal organometallic complexes, those metal complexes with this particular type class of ligands tend to be more stable than the ones which had beta hydrogen. So, obviously, a, this is a very effective approach in enhancing the stability of transition metal sigma alkyl complexes and as a result several new types of uh, ligands have been developed. For example, one can have a methyl moiety. These are unidented ligand. So, methyl moiety has only alpha hydrogen, there is no beta hydrogen for it to eliminate. One can have this CH2 TMS group. This also does not have a beta hydrogen for it to eliminate, hence the beta elimination pathway would be unfavorable. One can have a benzyl group, this itself also does not have a beta hydrogen for it to eliminate. And one can have another variant of this CH2 dimethyl phenyl group. This also does not have a beta hydrogen. These all belong to uh, the monodentate class of the special ligands which does not have beta hydrogen and imparts to greater stability of the complex. There are some bidentate chelating 
ligands as well. These ligands being chelating in nature, they impart extra stability because of chelation apart from imparting stability with respect to not having beta hydrogens. So, these bidentate ligands include the following So, one can see that the beta hydrogen does not have a ligand a hydrogen. Similarly, uh, the variation with phosphorus this has a phosphorus atom and also there is no beta hydrogen at the phosphorus. So, this also does not have any hydrogen at the beta and these are bidentate ligands that uh, impart stability to the transition metal sigma alkyl complexes. So, what we have seen to summarize in this lecture is that we have looked at various reasons which inhibit beta hydrogen elimination reaction and that results in extra stability to transition metal sigma or, uh, organic organometallic complexes. And to this effect, we have looked at two such uh, uh, strategies, the one that involve uh, that absence of beta hydrogen uh, in the uh, metal alkyl uh, uh, ligand as we have been discussing and that comes in two types, unidented and bidented one. And the first one that we had discussed is about making the formation of the olefin unfavorable or uh, either statically or energetically that will also successfully inhibit uh, beta elimination pathway and uh, impart stability to the transition metal sigma alkyl complexes. So, with this we are still continuing uh, with on an interesting topic of beta elimination that results in decomposition of many transition metal uh, organometallic complexes and in our next lecture we will look into few more reasons as to how to suppress this beta elimination uh, reaction in transition metal sigma organ complexes to our advantage and impart stability to this otherwise very unstable transition metal uh, organometallic complexes. I thank you for being with me in this lecture and I look forward to an interesting one uh, particularly on this topic in the following lecture. Thank you.